Hi everyone, welcome to the value. So today we're looking at Viru and we're looking at the advisory committee and their decision today. So basically eight of them said no and five of them said yes. Um, though it is not a binding decision, so the FDA does not actually have to follow this. Um, and if we actually look at the reasoning that came through, even though some people said no, um, some of the, they were actually very borderline, where they could have been a yes, they could have been a no. So the ones that said yes, they did see clear benefit, um, but at the same time they did feel uncomfortable around the uncertainties, which is the low kind of trial size, and basically the recommendation is a larger trial size uh, that is likely to be requested. So if we look at the no's and the yes, they were not clear. It's literally it's very um, everyone was literally on a fence. Like you look at the uh, discussion that went on today, and it, the everyone thought the benefit was actually quite good, but the problem was there was uncertainties that they wanted addressed, and some of them just felt like they were making a decision where they said no because they did not want to risk their reputation, but and at the same time they did not want to abstain. So th that no could have easily been a yes as well if they had more data to go on. Uh, which is what kind of gives the hope around this situation. Where you should not look at the headline and go actually advisory committee more people said no than yes. Um, it actually does not work that way. Especially with the FDA. They will look at the decision. Um, and I'll see that um, it was actually literally a half half decision. Where it was so split between opinions that they're going to look at it and go actually um, they're going to see it as more of a situation that hey uh, the ones that actually said no actually said no because there was not enough data where they felt the sample size was not large enough they thought a trial with a design where the number size was about 500 was kind of going to be much more better um, and hence why that was a no so we actually think about that reasoning and we go if the FDA looks at this and they go uh, that potentially a larger trial size might have changed those no's to yes then uh, that's not actually the biggest problem at all. So the FDA could likely come through and say we might approve this but with a condition that a larger trial size is needed. And I think that's what um, the company itself sees as well. So if we look at what was said, the advisory committee voted 8 to 5 that the known and potential benefits of subdisabulin when used uh, for the treatment of adult patients hospitalized with COVID-19 at high risk of ADRs does not outweigh the known and potential benefit, potential risks of subdisabulin. However... Uh, there was additional discussion around the clinical trial design aspects of additional clinical trials as a potential post authorization requirement. So potentially they could just authorize it um, and re request a, um, another trial to be done um, alongside it. So they can actually sell subisabulin and at the same time go to those hospitals and go we're trying to do another trial, will you actually sign up? And they potentially might actually have a better chance of getting larger numbers as well and potentially doing a much better trial as well if they're able to sell it, generate, generate more cash alongside and also work with the hospitals to gather more data. Um, FDA will consider the input of the advisory committee as part of the review of the EUA and render a decision on the emergency use authorization. So basically, if we consider that, um, yeah, like they're, they're going to look at it and they're going to feel like that it's um, it definitely has a chance of approval, but a likely chance where they'll have to redo another trial, which I think the company accepts that. We look forward to continuing to work with the FDA as we continue our efforts to ensure that this product is available to patients in a timely manner. Um, so the one thing that if they if they were to request another trial to be done, it would take many months. And if you don't approve it um, now, as opposed to approving it in many months time, uh, imagine how many lives you affect uh, based on uh, the thought that, hey, the sample size is not large enough. Uh, so that's the thing. I think the FDA has a, if, if they were acting on common sense, they would likely approve this 
and then also at the same time ask for another trial to be done alongside it and that's a common sense decision uh, though we don't know what the FDA is thinking of course um, and potentially they may decide otherwise in a still evolving COVID-19 pandemic taking the lives of over 300 US citizens a day with the threat of a new virus variant looming that may not be as easily treated with the limited arrays of pres presently used therapies there is an urgent need for new therapies of greater effectiveness than what we have av what is available so I think the FDA is going to consider that uh, the current therapies are actually not that effective um, and one thing that's denying sabizabulin right now is its trial size so if we actually consider and use that common sense uh, that even though the trial size um, likely needs to be redone uh, with um, what their recommendation was 500 people uh, they are you know they do have a very good chance that an approval will still come through and that will be the case and I think the company definitely accepts that they accept that the trial size was a bit low in numbers um, and but I think at the same time they're quite excited about today because uh, the people that came through um, and if you actually want to watch this as well it's on YouTube or I'll post a link on it uh, below in the description where you can actually uh, listen to this discussion um, and then see how the people were reasoning like the way they were reasoning um, any of these yes or no's could have been literally the other way around um, so I think the FDA is not going to consider the yes or no's they are just going to consider the reasoning um, and it actually makes a lot of sense um, literally majority of them just were uncertain about the trial size um, and they were not willing to risk their reputation on something like that um, so you remember these people are actually not um, part of the uh, FDA entirely they're just literally like consultants they are contracted by the FDA to provide an opinion and they they are, they are required to have a minimal amount of conflict of interest um, so basically they all decided um, based on their own kind of opinions and their own reputations as well so if you think about it a couple of them at least was considering their reputation where they did not want to say yes uh, and they did not want to abstain at the same time and hence why they ended up with a no instead of anything else but if you actually look at the listen to how they were talking um, yeah like they were literally on a fence and I think the FDA is going to pick up on that and then they're going to feel like hey a lot of the people here actually thought the benefit was actually very good um, but the uncertainty of that trial size was the problem and I think they're going to look at it and go actually it makes sense to approve this and it makes sense to also ask for a larger trial size to be done alongside of an approval uh, which I think Varu will gladly accept because Varu really just wants this approved um, they can get their cash flow coming in they'll have a ton of money to afford a larger trial size and everyone's happy at the end of the day um, whereas if the FDA actually does not approve it um, and they ask for another trial size to be done uh, well tr another trial to be done it'll be many months down the track and if we're having over 300 people um, being affected well I think they said over 300 uh, basically yeah taking the lives of over 300 US citizens um, they're going to consider that and I think they're not going to risk people's lives like that like they've had I think the FDA itself was on a, on fence as well and hence why they called for an advisory committee and I think with what the advisory committee has said today they're going to take more confidence in thinking that hey actually um, if the main problem just as we thought was the trial size we're just going to ask for a larger trial size and we're possibly going to approve um, the it for use as well because if you approve it for use they can actually sell it to hospitals talk to hospitals and then collect more data and I think that's a lot better way of doing this and I think the CEO kind of sees that as well um, yeah so until then uh, let me know what your thoughts are or if you've got any just comments uh, post below I uh, would love to hear them until then uh, good luck investing everyone um, and yeah like also if you 
want me to make a comment on the share price um i i see positives in the um advisory committee and what the uh what might be the eventual decision of the fda uh, but regardless of that, um, a lot of people are going to consider the decision made by the, um, the advisory committee, and I'm, we're likely to see quite a shock in the share price. I think a lot of people are going to sell down um, just because they want to reduce their risk, and we likely could see the stock um, at ten dollars or less. Uh, so I, at at the same time, I think. Um, you want you you want to consider your own risk decision making, of course. Um, but I don't want you to think of it as oh, this is over. Um, this is definitely not over. Um, at an approval could happen. It's a fifty fifty decision right now. Um, and I think basically there is no you don't need to panic. Like even though you will look at the share price, and you may panic when you do. Uh, do not panic. Like regardless of what's happening with the share price. Uh, if we look at what the FDA is going to do, the FDA has a good chance that it's going to approve it as well. So if the share price, no matter, we've seen the share price go really low in the past. So I think, you know, there's nothing that we haven't seen before. But of course, uh, the waiting game is just tiring, of course. Um, so I think back in May, we, see, we saw the share price at like $8.46. So, um I think the, yeah, like, we're, we're probably going to see this share price test $10 because we saw um, the stock come down to $10 and then basically the FDA made a comment. Um, it shot back up by, like, almost 40%. And then uh, basically we've got the advisory committee where the stock was halted and then basically afterwards um, we got our decision and tomorrow morning it's likely the stock is going to be sold down on a negative kind of sentiment because I think people are going to look at this advisory committee and feel like things are not in the favor of them um, but definitely definitely not I don't think it's as bad as it looks uh, but you know it just it's just me interpreting it uh, but of course you might interpret it in a diff very different way to me of course um, but yeah, like if we look here, eight dollars forty six. Uh, but I think we're, the support is going to be around this ten dollars zone. Uh, the stock's going to take a massive hit, of course, and it's not going to feel nice at all. Uh, but do not think it's the end of the world. There is still a very much hope that a uh, authorization will come through. I don't know how long they will take to make this decision. Um, no one knows really. Uh, but hopefully it is. Um, quick but I don't think it's going to be um, within a day or two because they're going to have to think about this they're going to have to think about what uh, trials design needs to be done and what kind of data needs to be requested and then they're going to come to a decision so it potentially could be next week or the week after um, I don't think it's going to take days it will probably take months and that's going to be very very normal so yeah like don't don't worry about this uh, share price if you're going to hold if you're going to hold and you're going to watch it go down don't panic uh, but at the same time um, if you don't feel like you want to take that risk then very much get out of the stock because things if they do not get an approval things will look worse of course um, so um, yeah I think you make your decision based on your own sentiment your own uh, ability to take risk and you are in a very high risk stock um, I cannot emphasize that more like this is a high risk high reward stock um, and anything with high risk potentially comes with a high loss as well so you know you want to think about these decisions clearly um, at the current stage I can only tell you that hey the advisory committee came to a decision but they were so they were very um, they were not clear on what they thought they were literally on a fence and basically, uh, I think they're gonna FDA is gonna look at that, and they're gonna they're gonna take that feedback on. And the main feedback was that the trial size was not large enough to give clear data in terms of accuracy. A lot, some kind of felt it was a bit more of a lucky kind of situation where hey, potentially if some factors go in your way, you've got a a very good result. Um, so 
that's the thing they did not think the trial size was large enough to rely on that uh that was a reason that some of them said no so if you look at the whole ra- reason behind some of them saying no um yeah like something that literally said no because the trial size was not was not large enough uh so when you we look we consider that the fda is also going to look at that and they're going to go uh everyone's reasoning behind this was actually not that extreme so i don't think it's um that negative on Varu. i think actually think it's actually positive that hey um we all acknowledge the size trial size was not that large um and potentially they can approve it and also ask for a larger trial to be done afterwards and i think that is the more common sense and the likely decision that will probably come through um but hey we have to wait for the fda and we have to see how they go um but yeah like until then um yeah uh, like i said before good luck investing everyone and i really really hope this one turns out well